Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Half-Life podcast. Wow, I haven't done one of these in a good while as well, much like my Silent Hill podcast. So I thought I would reintroduce some of the new characters here to talk about while I'm waiting for the suggestions on the uh, aliens and UFO stuff. So uh, I also saw some people commenting recently about bringing this back. So yeah, I thought it was a good idea. I'm interested in doing these again. And that's always what it is about is how much am I interested in something. And that way I can talk about it here. This next creature that's encountered within the first Half-Life game is a doozy. It's definitely almost even like a mini boss of some sort. If but for the fact that you're dealing with something that is found many more times than let's say even a mini boss within games so it has to do with a creature that is tenacious difficult to kill and absolutely relentless like it'll hunt you down no matter where you are at in the level so you absolutely have to take care of it whenever you encounter it and I'm talking about this the alien grunt which you're looking at a picture of here everyone who's played the first Half-Life game knows what I'm talking about when I'm stating what a nuisance this particular alien is. I mean, it is something that you have to absolutely drop what you're doing and anything involving the game to take care of this. Not just because of its close range attacks, but also because of that insidious weapon that it has on its hand that delivers these brutal long range attacks. So, so here's all the information associated with this alien grunt. Well, it's found somewhere closer I guess towards the middle of the game not necessarily too far back but still somewhere in there and it is a creature that dwarfs many of the other aliens stands about seven feet tall in total by far though its most distinct feature because it does bear it looks like some similarities to the Vortigons in terms of how its legs are shaped how it has its arms and then, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, it's long range attack. But it does have its most distinct feature being what looks to be armor. What's interesting, though, is that this armor could actually be biological. So rather than being like a metallic, true surface of some sort, like an inanimate object, in this case, it's actually part of his body. And this is evidenced by the fact that later on throughout the game, you run into areas where it looks like these alien grunts are being manufactured manufactured from scratch so it gives you the idea that the uh, main enemies of the race uh, I'm sorry of the uh, of the aliens within the half-life game in this case the Ly the nylon's army they are manufactured from scratch this also adds to the fact that you're dealing with something that doesn't really have that much intelligence it's just pure brute force so it's not gonna sneak up on you it's not gonna wait patiently no when you encounter it or it encounters you it absolutely attacks and just continues attacking until one of you is dead um, it does have various forms of attack too so first off there's that long range nuisance that I was mentioning earlier it has to do with this that hive hand that it has this is also a biological weapon it fires these little insects that almost sound like bees or hornets and it shoots them straight at you and what makes them so annoying is the fact that these things instead of just being shot straight can actually turn corners so they can yeah let's say in this case you're hiding behind a crate of some sort they can turn the corner within that crate or around that crate and still find you even if you're far away I remember playing the game and wondering like how far I can go with those hornets still finding me and it was pretty pretty far so again a huge nuisance when it comes to that fact the other weapon that it has has to do with its own brute force there are several scripted scenes within the game where if you get close to it or it gets close to you it can deal a huge amount of damage when it comes to its arms or it comes to its legs like it'll uh, use its own hands or its own appendages as melee weapons of some sort and then that way it'll attack you preferably let's say like from a long range attack but then once it gets you in a corner and you're uh, pretty much outnumbered then it'll just take care of the rest for you speaking of which let's talk about some of the features uh, with regards to its look so yes 
it looks to have two arms, but in fact there's a third arm tying in again to the vortigon. And this is a short arm that's extending from its torso. And then its legs also seem to be, again, related to the vortigon. I guess the only difference is that this creature, though, has multiple red eyes. It's kind of hard to see because throughout these attacks that this creature has, you're not necessarily paying attention to its uh, eyes. But yes, it has multiple red eyes. And then that quote-unquote armor I was mentioning earlier, it looks again to be built in biologically into its body. You can make out, in some cases, tubes, or it looked to be tubes, uh, know that because the graphics are a little bit more older and dated from the first Half-Life game, but the details with them, seem to apply that these tubes extend out from the body portions of the body into this quote unquote armor and then that's where it becomes all completely biological and then with regards to its strength and its health it has actually almost double the health of your average marine that you run into within the game so if you thought those marines were uh, something to deal with this thing is almost double it has 80 percent more health than those marines themselves and then also because of that armor that it has, any shots that you take towards it, any of your own weapons that you shoot at it, it'll reduce the impact of it by 20%. So much so that if you're shooting something that is actually the impact of 20% health, it'll be like nothing because it already takes up that 20% from its armor. So anything as far as like, let's say your average gun or even your crowbar, forget it. Like you're not gonna do any harm uh, associated with, I think even the crossbow or some kind of bow doesn't do anything. You have to go full hard uh, shotgun or something on the lines of machine gun or whatever else uh, can be tied into uh, much of the harder weapons as well. Uh, the interesting thing though about this creature is that unlike the Vortigaunt, it also doesn't have energy based weapons. So it doesn't have something that it builds up. Rather, this hive hand seems to be the only thing that um that that it uses as a weapon almost like its own form of gun too now some interesting trivia about this creature and and things associated with it um if you have a chance encounter in one point of the game it seems to be with this another weapon that it has is an alien energy cannon which you're looking at a picture of here further tying into its i guess militaristic mode because much like the other marines that you run into and some of their high caliber weapons this one this alien energy cannon is another one as well here's a feature where instead of shooting from close range you're going to have to do stuff from real long range because this uh, energy cannon gun can take care of a lot of damage too. Another thing uh, tied into this creature is the fact that it does not seem to have any um, fear whatsoever uh, with regards to certain weapons like if you try if you throw a grenade at it it's not going to run away not like the marines that you run into where you throw a grenade and then you hear that sound bike I think some of them say even like uh, out loud like they say grenade and then they start running away not this creature either because of the fact that it knows it has all that armor protecting it it'll damage it but it just won't outright kill it or it's it just doesn't have the intelligence for that either so that could be also uh, another distinction uh, associated with it also this thing right here is called a black hole gun it was supposed to be something that was originally going to be used as a weapon within the game um, not much detail as to like what or how it was going to work presumably it was going to be able to shoot something based on the diagram you see here that would create some kind of damage of some sort but it was ultimately removed within the game and instead replaced with the previous mentioned hive hand um, there was some upgrades with this alien grunt too whenever the HD model was introduced then um, that's where you're looking at a picture of it here that shows more detail that's really though about the only other <clears throat> I guess add-on tied to this alien grunt because it's never made any appearance anywhere else I think though there was one game that it was in if I remember correctly it was that uh, blue shift but I don't recall it being within any other game if someone knows if it was within like opposing force or any of the other ones I think 
uh, yes, it might have been actually in Opposing Wars, my apology, but any of the other sequels, like the Half-Life 2 games, let me know. I don't recall seeing the alien grunt there as well. And then finally, you're looking at some of the concept art uh, tied to this creature. T as, uh, also, you'll notice that it did have a bit of a change when it came to its first look. It seems like it looked more, at least in my opinion, like a gorilla almost within this concept art. And then little by little, it was buffed up more like it, the, the the tiny waist was added on and then the broader shoulders made it more upright with regards to its spine uh, it seems like that seems to be the bigger changes to it my personal opinion about the alien grunt I thought it was kind of weird to run into it within the game only because it didn't have like it kind of threw me off uh, it didn't have much sense being within all this other race of aliens because some of the other aliens like the Vortigaunts the uh the head crab, um, the tentacles, uh, the ones that I previously mentioned, I mean, those are out of this world, literally. Like, that, that's the kind of stuff that's truly sci-fi related, the stuff that one wants to see within the games. But whenever this alien grunt came about, I mean, to me, it basically seemed like it was another uh, uh, marine enemy within the game. It acted like a marine, almost, and then it um, shot like a marine. Um, it seemed... It, 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 made it seem like it was too human compared to the other aliens that we were running into consistently within the game. So I'm not too big of a fan of the introduction of the alien grunt within the first Half-Life game, only because, again, it just didn't make much sense to have it there compared to all the other worldly aliens that we ran into before. I guess uh, the developers also thought this, too, because, again, it wasn't really introduced within any of the other sequels thereafter. But that's it. That's all the information tied to this alien, this uh, unique creature, this alien grunt. A big nuisance, big annoyance again within the game, but something that you absolutely have to deal with. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.